Hello, I'm Rabbi Elton from the Great Synagogue in Sydney, and our personality this week is Rav Yitzhak Alfasi, also known by his acronym The Riff, born in 1013 and died in 1103. Rav Alfasi was born in Algiers, but it's likely he spent most of his life in Fez, hence his title Al-Fasi, the one from Fez. He was the most important Talmudist in the North African area in his generation. And as we've said in previous weeks, when central Jewish life moved from Babylon to elsewhere, one place was Germany, as we discussed when we talked about Rabbeinu Gershom, but another place was North Africa. Rav Al-Fasi's teachers were Rabbeinu Nisim and Rabbeinu Hananel. They are two of the earliest commentators on the Talmud. If you open a standard page of the Talmud in the Vilna edition, you'll see on many pages the comments of Rabbeinu Nisim and Rabbeinu Hananel. These were the North African teachers of Rav Al-Fasi. He himself took a different approach to the Talmud. He saw what a difficult text the Talmud was and how it was very arduous to try and work out from reading the text of the Talmud what the bottom line ruling actually should be. So he did something extraordinary. He wrote a book called the Halachot, the Laws, and essentially he fillets the Talmud. He takes each page of Talmud, each discussion, and he removes all the backwards and forwards, the to and fro of the discussion, and he just gives the bottom line law. In other words, he doesn't change the text of the Talmud. He retains the original text as edited in the Talmudic period, but he removes all extraneous discussion and elaboration, leaving just the text of the Talmud, which gives you what the law actually is. This became enormously important and very popular because it's much more accessible than the Talmud itself. There's no question and query about what the ruling should be. At least we know what Rav Al-Fasi thinks the final ruling ought to be, and you can learn directly from that. And in fact, at times when the Talmud itself was banned, the Halakhot was not banned, and therefore it could be used as a guide to Jewish law. Now, there were downsides to this. It became the practice in some places to become expert in the Halakhot of Rav Al-Fasi, but not expert in the Talmud itself. And that, of course, uh, leads to limitations because you're dependent, as it were, on a secondary source, or at least a process source, rather than the original source, the Talmud itself. Rav Al-Fasi's halachot become one of the most important origins of later halachic rulings. For example, he was the teacher of the teachers of Rabbi Moses Maimonides' father. In other words, there is an intellectual uh, genealogy from the Rif to the Rambam, to Maimonides, uh, and therefore his imprint on the Rambam is very great indeed, even though the Rambam differed from him in some regards. He's one of the most important medieval commentators and halachic authorities of any tradition, and we'll see in a few weeks' time, when it came to formulating the law in the 16th century, he was one of the three people who were taken most authoritatively when a conclusion was being made about what the law ought to be. He died in 1103, not in Fez at all, but in, in fact in Andalusia, in Spain, because he was forced to flee there at the age of 75. He established a new yeshiva, a new seminary, a new academy in Spain, and so he lived essentially in three different places, Algeria and Fez and Spain, and made enormous influence in each place and in fact the rest of Jewish intellectual and religious history. Thanks for joining.